I think there is no such thing as unconditional friendship. Even love at first sight has certain conditions, which, when they wear off, bring human beings back to earth and to surprisingly cold realities. You can fail because of a disagreement, but not because of laziness, because you should have done something that you had the means to do, but didn't. Given a choice between two solutions, I'm not prepared to say I would choose violence, but I do know that the logic of some situations at times leaves you no choice. Under its current form, that is imperialism controlled, debt is a cleverly managed reconquest of Africa, aiming at subjugating its growth and development through foreign rules. Thus, each one of us becomes the financial slave, which is to say, a true slave. We do not talk of women's emancipation as an act of charity or out of a surge of human compassion. It is a basic necessity for the revolution to triumph. Women hold up the other half of the sky. Imperialism is a system of exploitation that occurs not only in the brutal form of those who come with guns to conquer territory. Imperialism often occurs in more subtle forms, alone, food aid, blackmail, we are fighting this system that allows a handful of men on earth to rule all of humanity. You cannot carry out fundamental change without a certain amount of madness. In this case, it comes from non-conformity. The courage to turn your back on the old formulas. The courage to invent the future. It took the madmen of yesterday for us to be able to act with extreme clarity today. I want to be one of those mad men. We must dare to invent the future. I would simply hope that my contribution had served to convince the most disbelieving that there exists a force called the people and that we must fight for and with the people. We believe the army to be an arm of the people and that it can't live in tranquility and opulence that clash with the chronic poverty of our people. Our soldiers must constantly experience what the people experience. The people must defend themselves. They must decide to make peace. When they cannot, or don't wish to, pursue a war, they must decide too what the army should be. Regarding education, we intend to attack both the container and its content. When the colonial masters opened schools, they had no benevolent or humanitarian intentions in mind. Their concern was to produce clerks capable of performing work useful to their system of exploitation. Our task today is to inject new values into our schools so that they can produce a new man who understands ideas, who absorbs them and who functions in total harmony with the dynamic evolution of his people. As far as we are concerned, the foreign debt should not be repaid. It is just unjust. It's like paying war reparations twice over. You can fight effectively only against things you understand well. And you can't win unless you are convinced your fight is just. The enemies of the people are the politicians who travel throughout the countryside only at election time. The politicians who are convinced that only they can make Upper Volta work. A person can deny everything, but their deepest intentions will come out in the end. There are days that hold lessons incomparably richer than those of an entire decade. During such days, the people learn with such incredible speed and so profoundly that a thousand days of study are nothing in comparison. That's why when we are told two years is too short a time for returning to normal constitutional life, we say it's quite sufficient. Because when you let the people speak in complete freedom and complete democracy, the people will tell you in 30 minutes what they want. We don't need two years. There is no shame 
in getting on one's knees when it is in the interests of the people. Imperialism is everywhere, through the culture that it spreads, through its misinformation, it gets us to think like it does, it gets us to submit to it, and to go along with all its maneuvers. Knowledge is not enough to change the conditions of black people. Understand that we need to create programs and systems that will empower us economically, spiritually, and mentally. We need courage and action.